Dexter's Laboratory is quintessential 90s classic television. I mean, this is the kind of stuff we grew up with in the 90s as 90s kids. This, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Powerpuff Girls, and some of the earlier cartoons like DuckTales and Chippendale Rescue Rangers are the things that made our television lives in the 90s. Now, this cartoon itself is by a guy named Gendy Tartakovsky who created a lot of other really classic cartoons from the 90s. I mean, this guy was basically the uh, Walt Disney of the 90s. He made Dexter's Lab. He was a writer on the Powerpuff Girls. He worked on Two Stupid Dogs. He worked on The Critic, probably one of the most underrated adult cartoons of all time. He created Samurai Jack. I mean, probably the coolest Asian character since Bruce Lee films. I don't really know what he's up to now. I don't keep up with new cartoons. But in the late 90s, he was Walt Disney come John Hughes. I mean, this guy was defining an entire generation of a media subgenre. Now, of course, Dexter's Laboratory was a very successful cartoon. And of course, it came out with merchandise like toys and, of course, quite a few video games. The video game I'm reviewing right now is Dexter's Laboratory Mandark's Lab for the PS1. What this game basically is, is a collection of mini games. See, Dexter has to progress through the level by completing various tasks in mini game forms. His arch rival Mandark takes over his lab and Dexter has to find the passcode to get back into the lab. He has to use a special voice synthesizer to sound like Mandark so his computer would recognize the passcode and for him to actually get in there. So he has to complete a few mini games like uh, he has to find out the password from his sister Dee Dee. And to do that he has to have a kind of dance off with her. It's a rhythm game. Then he has to actually go into her room and find uh, this voice synthesizing thing that changes his voice. And of course Dee Dee's room obviously is filled with cooties. So we go into a different mini game where you're in this first person on rails perspective shooting cooties with your blaster. It's actually really surprising how many different mini games there are. And the mini games don't repeat each other. It's like each one of them is a little bit different. I mean, sometimes, yeah, they are just shooting. Like, uh, sometimes you're basically shooting dodgeballs at kids in a uh, playground area which is a lot like shooting cooties. But sometimes they completely mix it up where you're flying around in a spaceship uh, shooting these evil monster creatures, which is a completely different style of gameplay. Some minigames are just straight up grand. I mean, there's this one Mario Kart style minigame where you have to race against Didi in these three levels. And it's basically three levels, so it's like 20 to 25% of just some kind of average budget kart racing game, like a full game. And for the most part, the mini games have pretty good controls. And while you're outside of the mini games in the regular, I guess, map screen or whatever you want to call it, just walking around Dexter's lab or Dexter's house or just walking around in the world, which is basically a place that gets you from one mini game to another. Even the controls in this portion of the game are fine and the camera too. I was assuming this would be like Rascal, where the camera will be just abysmal, the movement would be completely horrible and it would just be unplayable but it's not like that at all the movement camera and controls of this game is absolutely acceptable and most of the mini games are fun i really only played like one or two mini games that were bad like my most frustrating experience with the mini game was this mini game where i have to chase these weird creatures through a maze it's not just chasing them you have to hit them with this thing that splatters them and you have to get like five of them in a row to progress so you have to line yourself up while this thing is running super fast and there's also like twists and turns so it's hard to like line yourself up because the enemy is always going left and right and on top of all this there's all these horrible obstacles jumping out of the ground and combine that with the fact that the controls that are make you go left and right are absolutely horrendous in this particular mini game. This was just a frustrating experience. I mean, if most of the mini games were like this, this would be a horrible game. But most of the mini games have controls that are absolutely fine. Like this mini game where you're just basically racing cards. The carts are very smooth. In fact, they're a little too smooth. It's way too easy to make sharp turns. I think if you're going to pick out one really 
prevalent bad thing in this game, it would be the difficulty. While most of the minigames are solid in terms of controls and gameplay, they're just way too easy. I feel like uh, this game is made for people that are like 8 plus. Like, I honestly feel an 8 year old, if he put his mind to it, he could pass this entire game with one sitting. Dexter's Laboratory, Mandark's Lab is a very casual game, but because it has good graphics, a lot of variation in terms of the kind of gameplay that's in the game, and it uses characters from one of the most beloved cartoons of all time. I wouldn't say it's great just because it's a little too easy, but it's playable and there's some fun to have here, mostly for kids, but if you're a fan of Dexter's Lab, you'll have fun with it too, even as an adult, because I had fun with it. This game gets an official Stan Birdman rating of a 7.3 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, my friends.